Welcome back aboard Arabella. At the end of last week's episode, the jib and furler were finally installed, and the day after that, Satchel and Steve worked out the placement and installed the tracks and ran the lines back to the winches, which were now installed to the cockpit combing. I also might have spoken too soon when I said that we'd see Arabella under full sail, even though that was the plan. The wind and waves kicked up mightily on the way out of Portland, and Scott got these shots from down below while Steve motored through the foul weather. A few days before departure, Steve got a close-up look at a very different kind of sailboat from Arabella, and had a talk with its skipper, who was preparing for a solo around-the-world ocean race. When we first got here to Maine Yacht Center, we had a rainy day and I was working on uploading some footage to Ben and other office details. And there were these guys spreading out these massive sails in the lounge. They were just huge. And they're talking about 300 miles a day and the transatlantic and the solo nonstop. And one of the guys had a hat and shirt that said Sparrow on it. So when I got back to Arabella, I did a little Google and I uh, found the boat Sparrow and it's Captain Ronnie and I really, I don't know, I thought Ronnie's story was cool and the boat is literally the polar opposite from Arabella. Like I don't think you can get farther from Arabella unless you had foils on the boat. Um, so we're going to run over and let Ronnie kind of tell Ronnie's story because I think he's going to tell it better than I could. He certainly knows it better and we're going to go check out his race boat. Satchel's here with me helping to film and check it out. And this is like right up Satchel's alley. Yeah, well, this is an open 50. This is a full on ocean race boat. See the prod so, out there. Let's see if we can check a few things out here. One thing I want to point out, everything here looks to be Dyneema. <laughs> yeah. So what do you got? Dyneema strop. Yep. Friction blocks so you don't have line on line is what you don't want. Line on metal is very happy. Splice die. Dyneema with a sheath on it. It's really not that different from what we have on our bowsprit. No, a really only big difference is this is rod. Yeah. And there's a turnbuckle. Turnbuckle instead of the lashing. Instead but... of the lashing. Yeah. But we could absolutely get rid of the turnbuckle and do a lashing. Part I mean, of the, the way... reason we did a turnbuckle is because I had the bronze turnbuckles from yeah. Victoria. Well, and the way this works is that the strop doesn't have to be that tight because the, the bowsprit can flex enough, so it just tightens as the load comes on. Yeah. This is, a, this is very clearly a, a retrofit. And then uh, got a couple lines coming up through here, low friction ring up here as well. And then we just added a furler onto Arabella. And check out. These furlers these are furlers. a little different. Yeah. This is a continuous furler which means the line doesn't have to wrap all the way around it. It just stays under tension. You can see there's two sides of the line coming out of the furler. That's for a Jenica or, or code zero. Running force day? Yeah. That's what I read that as. Yeah. That's good. Still using bronze. We get some bronze. Yeah, that's bronze. Here we go, here's our internal chain plates and oh, yeah. much bigger turnbuckles. Not that the much bigger. It's super soft right now because it's off three quarter inch shim. Okay. Because we have it totally detuned because we're doing a new compression post. Ah. So we have all the mass compression removed from the boat. That's why the four stays like totally slack. That's why the shrouds are so slack. So Ronnie's rig detensioned. <laughs> not ready to sail is tighter than Arabella's fully tensioned rig and ready to go. Yep. And that's one of the huge differences with these race boats versus something like Arabella is all of this is under way, way, way higher strains um, so that you can really pull that rig super tight and push those sails and go a lot, lot faster. It's the same pieces though, just a little bigger, right? Hayden bigger. made our turnbuckles. Yep. They made Ronnie's too. I'm just gonna keep on working while I'm yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my name's Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Simpson. I'm from Lahaina, Hawaii, and I'm getting ready to race this uh, older Open 50 solo nonstop around the world. I got into sailing like 15 years ago. 
2008 and I've always wanted to race solo around the world so I've, I've done a ton of sailing like over 140,000 miles of ocean sailing now and uh, a lot of ocean racing and charter captain work and rigger work and all kinds of just sailing work I do a lot of sailing media and I've just been kind of uh, full-time in the sailing scene for 15 16 years and I've always wanted to race solo around the world and got my shot in this new race called the Global Solo Challenge. We're preparing to leave here at Man Yacht Center and, uh, and go to uh, Spain for the start of the race. So I've got my buddy Ed with me right now. We're kind of making some final preparations. Um, I got the boat here exactly a year ago. And after, after a bunch of work on the boat and sailing on the boat and training over the spring, I did my 2,000 mile solo qualifier for the race and I sailed from Maryland out around Bermuda and up to, up to here. Um, did my qualifier and then I ended up at Main Yacht Center so we could work on the boat. So we hauled the boat out, we had her in the shed, did a bottom job, uh, did a gray vinyl wrap on the hull, also uh, pulled the rig out and did new rigging. Um, and then put the boat back in the water and put it all back together with like a uh, a big charging system upgrade, all new batteries, alternator, that kind of stuff. All the Victron solar charge controllers and all, all kinds of cool stuff. And it's like this little communication hub with this little cool screen. We got a lot of data. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did um, SOK batteries, but other than that, it's all the Victron chargers and the whole, whole shebang, yeah. This is a 1994 Open 50. Okay. So this boat was uh, designed and built in Australia for the BOC challenge, which was a uh, older around the world race back in the day. Yeah, this is sick. And then after that, Brad Van Lu, the American skipper Brad Van Lu had her, and she was called Balance Bar. And she raced around the world in the Around Alone race in 98 and 99. Oh, wow. And then uh, this tech entrepreneur guy, Philippe Kahn, had the boat, the guy that invented the cell phone camera. Oh, really? Philippe Kahn had the boat, and it was renamed Pegasus. And during that time, he did a newer rig, a carbon deck, because the hull is glass, but the deck is carbon. Okay. He did a carbon deck, the new house top, new rudder, new rig, new, new boom, new keel. So he kind of like optimized the boat in the early 2000s. And then a few private owners had her, and then my buddy Whitehall had her. And Whitehall sailed the boat from California out around Hawaii, down around Cape Horn, and then up to here during COVID. So he dropped the boat off in 2021. And then he was trying to decide what to do with the boat, and then he loaned it to me. And I came and grabbed the boat in August of 22, like exactly a year ago. Wow. And I've been kind of campaigning the boat all over the East Coast and um, put 5,000 miles on, on her in the last year. And that was sailing down as far as Charleston and then doing a bunch of solo sailing and sea trials after that. And then my 2,000 mile qualifier out around Bermuda and up to here. Um, and just learning the boat and upgrading the boat and finding sponsors. You know, we've got new sails, new furlers, new lines, a, a lot of new gear on the boat, so. Very exciting. Just trying yep. to get ready for our start date, October 28th. So nice. we're in the final stages right now, kind of like in the final push, trying to get out of here and go over to Spain. And then we've got another big five week push, hopefully, um, to the start line. And we have a cavernous sail locker. Most of the boat is empty. It really is. I mean, I can't Is imagine the two you. Would, they race with, and that's it. I can't imagine you'd want to be up there in any sort of weather. Oh, wait, it's a little problem. I don't see much uh, teak mahogany or varnish work here. <laughs> I, 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 I have seen. Hey, hold on. Hold on. There we go. The table. The table. Best of luck to Ronnie and his boat that has just been renamed to Shipyard Brewing for the race. Ronnie, according to his blog post, is heading across the Atlantic right now and dodging the remnants of a couple of hurricanes along the way. Back aboard Arabella on the way north, Steve tucked into Harpswell to try to get out of the weather. After securing the boat, Steve was watching a motorboat having trouble tying theirs off. The driver of the launch brought Steve over to help them out, and he got the line sorted out. But the weather wasn't quite done wreaking havoc at Dolphin Marina. I don't 
know if you can tell, but that's a boat sinking at the dock. That sucks. The decision was made to come off the mooring and find a more protected spot to anchor for the night. Stover's Cove, just around the corner, turned out to be the perfect spot. In the fog the next morning, Robin piloted the boat back to the marina to do the first refuel since Bristol. Sometimes multi-pitch, if you go around a corner or the wind's real heavy, if you go around the corner and the wind's real heavy, it would be hard to communicate. This one? Yeah, perfect. Can I do a little reverse, Robin? Did you see that? You got it. You got it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Also, if you read down there, it says you it does what it's again, told. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We watched it go down yesterday. Yeah, Billy said a good one. Yeah. Yeah, we heard somebody call over the VHF that a boat was sinking in the dock, and they looked out and watched it finish up. Yeah. I'll read that. You pull that in my hand at all, you think? I'll rig a line for Billy. To
few weeks back, Steve put out a call for belaying pins, as Arabella was missing three. That call was almost immediately answered by Ron, who had the time and material to fill in the gaps on the mass bands. Not old and, and antique, but uh, brandy new, uh, made out of old propeller shafts. I hang around in boat yards, and when I find a bent propeller shaft that's been trashed, you know, a bend in a, a six-foot-long shaft doesn't matter for cutting out something like this. So, yep. I, awesome. Anyway. Thank you so, so much, much, Ron. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Glad to help. meet you and see what's going on and be a tiny part of the whole adventure. And this strip belt boat. Yeah, that's a pretty one. You like our uh, makeshift one? It's really good, though. some rope and some electrical tape and it got us through. Cool, fully pinned. Thanks Ron, that'll make a big difference. Much to his own surprise, Steve finally made it off the boat with Robin for a couple of days of R&R &R on the local rock walls and mountain bike trails. So what do you think, Robin wanted to take the gear off and head up without the rope? No, I have enough gear for the two of us. <laughs> All set, card toss.